Jordan Axelrad, an associate professor from NYU Grossman School of Medicine, and I'm joined by Stephen Itzkowitz, professor from the Icon School of Medicine at Sinai, and we're here to discuss the AGA clinical practice update on management of inflammatory bowel disease in patients with malignancy commentary. So to start us off, Steve, which cancers have been associated with IBD? IBD has been associated with the development of a variety of intestinal malignancies, such as colon cancer, small bowel cancers, intestinal lymphoma, and even anal cancers, especially in patients who are HPV positive or have a history of perianal fistulae. But patients with IBD are also at risk of extra intestinal malignancies, including cholangiocarcinoma, especially in patients who also have primary sclerosis and cholangitis, and non-melanoma skin cancers, such as basal and squamous cell carcinomas. Jordan, which cancers have been associated with the medications that we use to treat IBD? Certain cancers are seen more commonly in patients with IBD who take particular medications. For folks on thiopurines, there's been an association with non-melanoma skin cancers, basal and squamous cell cancers, lymphoma, and genital urinary cancers. For anti-TNF, there's been an association with melanoma, and if combined with thiopurines, there's been an association with non-melanoma skin cancer and lymphoma. And there's also been an association between methotrexate and non-melanoma skin cancers as well. There are limited data in rheumatoid arthritis patients suggesting a link between JAK inhibitors with non-melanoma skin cancer, lung cancer, and lymphoma, although these data have not bared out in the IBD population. And current evidence does not show an increased risk of malignancy in patients treated with any of our other major classes of IBD therapies, although long-term data are lacking. Steve, for patients with IBD who develop an active cancer, what guidance should be given about managing their IBD medications? Well, little is known about the possible impact of IBD and IBD therapies on patients who have an active cancer, uh, specifically any impact on cancer progression. Uh, but given the increased risk of lymphoma and non-melanoma skin cancer with thiopurines, if a patient on a thiopurine develops lymphoma, it should be discontinued. And you should consider stopping the thiopurines for anyone who develops multiple or recurrent non-melanoma skin cancers. For the anti-TNF agents, if melanoma develops while on an anti-TNF, it should be discontinued. And if lymphoma develops, you should consider stopping the anti-TNF as well. There are limited data with the other biologic and small molecule therapies regarding their management in someone who develops a new cancer. And Jordan, for patients with IBD who have a history of cancer, what guidance should be given to them about managing their IBD medications? So also little is known about the risk of new or recurrent cancer in patients with a history of cancer related to IBD therapies. Retrospective and more recently prospective studies such as the Sapphire Registry, which Steve and I are co-leads on, uh, and patients with IBD and a history of cancer have indicated that there may be a numerically slightly higher crude incidence rate of new or recurrent cancers, but when adjusted for certain factors, have so far indicated that our various medications for IBD do not significantly increase a new or recurrent cancer risk. So finishing off, Steve, what overall advice do you have regarding the management of IBD in patients with cancer? The bottom line is that for patients with IBD and an active cancer, there has to be close coordination between the gastroenterologist and the oncologist, which is essential for managing both of these serious conditions. And for IBD patients with a history of cancer, the, the clinicians and patients should treat IBD the way they might someone who had no history of cancer.